Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia, if you guys are new here. Today I wanted to start my care guide series. I want to go into depth on a few genuses of plants and really give you pretty much every bit of information that you need. Again, I never recommend looking at one video and calling it a day. I think that you can take little bits of information from so many different people's videos and gather your information that way. So the first genus of plant that I want to talk to you guys about are Hoyas. This here is one of my newest Hoyas. This is a beautiful birthday present from my boyfriend. This is a Hoya Australis Lisa. I'll show you guys close up just so you guys can see the variegation, the beautiful, beautiful leaves. And if you guys can see there, the new growth actually comes in red and fades to the beautiful variegation that you see on the rest of the leaves. All right, so I'm definitely going to butcher this, but the Hoyas belong to the Aposanaceae family. <laughs> I really don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Don't quote me on that. But yes, they do belong to that family. And there are actually over 500 known species of Hoyas. So a lot. <laughs> Hoyas are actually native to tropical and subtropical Asia. So if you were to visit tropical and subtropical Asia, you should be able to find quite a few Hoyas. They come in many different shapes and sizes. They come in shrub-like plants, hanging plants, and vining plants, ones that really like to grow up trees and across branches. As much as I would love to hold this new child of mine the whole video i'm gonna put it down one thing that i find is really really special about hoyas are their blooms actually i typically don't like blooms in plants um they're not my favorite especially the ones that aren't the prettiest <laughs> i think that's self-explanatory but the hoya blooms are just spectacular they are unique to each individual plant and they typically grow in kind of like a half moon shape. I'll just post a picture right here because it's really hard to explain it if you've never seen one before. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is light. I have made a dedicated video on light and I did briefly touch on Hoyas, but I will reiterate myself definitely for this video. Hoyas really like to have a medium to bright indirect sunlight. That means that the sun rays will never actually be touching that plant. Some Hoyas with thicker succulent like leaves can handle a little bit more light, maybe a little bit of full sunlight throughout the day, but I wouldn't suggest putting any type of Hoyas in full sunlight all day long. So yeah, I would suggest putting them about a few feet back from a south facing window or in the window of an east or west facing window, somewhere close to those windows at least. I wouldn't say they're necessarily recommended for north facing windows, but if that's all you have, they could survive. Again, I talk about this all the time, they can survive, they're probably not going to thrive, but that's okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is watering and a watering schedule for your Hoya. So I do not believe in actual watering schedules like a specific day of the week. I don't think that works for really any plant. Hoyas like to dry out before they are watered again. So what that means is they actually like to be neglected a little bit in the watering department. I would say if you have a moisture meter, I would leave it until it reaches a zero and you know it's a zero all around the pot and there's really no moisture left in the soil. Once that happens, you can soak the Hoya all the way through, wait for the water to drip out of the drainage hole. And again, drainage holes are really important. So if you have a pot and you don't have it in a nursery pot, there's no drainage hole, you're going to run into trouble. You're going to get root rot. So you need to pot these plants in well draining pots so that when you water it, the excess water can drain through the pot. Hoyas are very sensitive to being overwatered, so if anything, if you're worried about overwatering, please just leave it a little bit longer. They can handle a little bit of drought or a skipped watering. They can handle it. Just 
don't overwater your Hoyas. So upon researching the Hoyas, I found some really interesting information about the temperature. Different Hoyas can be found at different altitudes, and different altitudes come with different climate. Most Hoyas live close to sea level. There are some Hoyas that actually grow at super high altitudes and those Hoyas specifically are very difficult to grow indoors long term because there's a huge temperature drop in the mountainous areas in Asia at nighttime. So if you're going to keep a Hoya indoors and it's one that lives at that higher altitude, you're going to have to mimic that temperature drop at night if you want it to survive. And that's really difficult if you have a lot of other tropical plants that don't want that. So there are ways around that. You can always put them out on your balcony overnight if, if you're really dedicated and you really want to keep that specific type of Hoya and have it thrive. Or you can do your best with what you've got and see how it goes. I can't guarantee that those specific type of Hoyas, I think the Hoya linearis, if that's how you pronounce it, I think that plant specifically is one that tends to like those temperature drops at night. So maybe stay away from those if you are a beginner in Hoyas. So with that exception, Hoyas like to be kept at about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. They can go a little bit higher and slightly lower, but not really. Just those specific Hoyas that like the drop in temperature at night, those ones can handle the drops, but most Hoya will get cold damage at anything around 10 degrees Celsius or below. So I definitely just recommend keeping your Hoyas at room temperature and they should just be fine. Humidity is another thing that I want to talk to you guys about for Hoyas specifically. Some plants are very, very sensitive to the amount of humidity that they get. If they don't get enough humidity, they crisp and they don't survive. Hoyas actually can survive in pretty average humidity conditions. While I wouldn't recommend anything below 50 or 40% humidity, which is again quite average, they can survive. They will thrive if given around 60% plus, but they are not super, super picky about humidity. Another thing to consider though, is that Hoyas with thinner leaves do need humidity more than Hoyas with more succulent-like leaves. So if you have a Hoya that has thin leaves, maybe consider getting a humidifier or not purchasing it if you don't want to purchase a humidifier. So these definitely aren't the thickest Hoya leaves that you can find, for sure not, but the Hoya Australis Lisa has nice thicker leaves and I can tell that this one would be just fine in a lower humidity situation, but luckily I do have a humidifier in this room so she will get the humidity that she wants. And this plant is a she. Its name's Lisa. <laughs> when talking about Hoyas, we also have to talk about their soil composition. What should they be living in? Typical to most indoor house plants, you really want a well-draining mix. You do not want your Hoya sitting in water as it's very susceptible to root rot. My favorite mixture for Hoyas would be 50% potting soil, 20% orchid bark, and 30% perlite. That will give you the ideal mixture for a well-draining Hoya. I will link down below the exact products that I use when potting up my Hoyas, as everything can be found on Amazon. In terms of fertilizer, Hoyas do not need to be fed overly often, so I would suggest feeding a fertilizer, a liquid fertilizer, at at least half the dosage probably a third of the recommended dosage every two weeks to a month. If you wanna be safe, maybe do it on a three week schedule, every three weeks. All right, so because I don't wanna make this a super long boring video, the last thing that I wanna talk about is propagation. Propagation with Hoyas is actually quite easy. As long as your plant has nodes, a node is where leaves come out of the stem, I can actually post a picture here of nodes on a Hoya and a proper cutting. But as long as that cutting has one or two nodes and maybe one, two, three leaves, you don't wanna to have too many leaves on that cutting because if you're putting it in water, it really can't support that many leaves. You could put it in sphagnum moss as well. Those are kind of my two favorite options in this case, but 
yeah, if you have the nodes and you have a leaf, you should have success in propagating your Hoyas. So I thought I would end this video by showing you guys my Hoyas. I know that you guys have probably recently seen these in my plant tour video, but here we go. This guy here is my Hoya Shepherdii. This came to me as a cutting, but I think it's so, so cute. I can't wait for some new growth. I think it actually might be putting out some new growth, so we will see. Yeah, it does actually look like the stem is growing, so soon he will be something more than just this little plant. <laughs> my next Hoya is my Hoya Crimson Queen. This is the queen and not the princess. The queen has the variegation on the outside of the leaves where the princess has it coming from the insides. And I actually prefer this variegation. I know a lot of people prefer the princess over the queen, but I really, really love this plant. Next, I just have this tiny little Hoya Carnosa Compacta, also known as a Hindu rope. For those of you who don't know this plant, this plant actually will eventually hang off the sides and have individual ropes that look kind of like this, but in a rope shape. But they're so, so fun. And I can't wait for this one to start hanging. You can see it's kind of tipping over the edge of the pot here, so that's a good sign. You guys saw the Hoya Australis Lisa in the beginning of this video. This is my newest Hoya. I love it, I love it, I love it. I can't wait to see this one grow. But yeah, that is it for me, guys. I really hope that this gave you a really good insight into Hoyas and what it takes to keep them thriving and alive. <laughs> if you guys have absolutely any questions about things that I didn't cover in this video, please leave comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, you can give it a thumbs up. It would really mean a lot to me. And we're so, so close to 100 subscribers. We're one away. I really hope by the time you guys are seeing this video that we are there and I'm celebrating already. I know it's a small celebration, but it's uh, super exciting for me. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!